Shalom, shalom the kulam. We're back to continue our discussion of the uses of the different letters in the Hebrew alphabet as uh, prefixes and suffixes. And today we're going to look at the letter mem. Uh, we'll take a minute to practice a handwriting for the mem. Remember the mem has two different forms. There's the form which is always used at the beginning or in the middle of a word. And it looks like this. We go down, up. Down. And if you remember, the root meaning for the letter mem is water. And uh, you can see the water, right? If you kept going, it would look like water. And the final mem is the mem sofit. And it's uh, made like a backwards A. You're going to start a little bit over on the left side. Come around to the right and put a tail on it. And this is the mem sofit which always appears at the end of the word, except for one place in Isaiah where it appears in the middle of the word. And that will be a mystery to discover for yourself. So, we'll go to the scriptures and see the use for the letter mem as a prefix. Breshit bet pasuk eser, Genesis 2.10 V'nahar yotze me'eden lahashkot et hagan Umisham yipared vahaya la arba rashim. Breshit bet pasuk shdaim. Genesis 2 2. Vayachal Elohim bayom hashvi'i, malachto asher asa, vayishbot bayom hashvi'i, mikol malachto asher asa. The letter mem as a prefix means basically from or out of. So in the first scripture in Genesis, we see that the river is coming out of Eden, me'eden, from Eden. In the second scripture, we see that Yahweh finished from the work that he was uh, doing on the six days. On the seventh day, he rested mi kol malachto, from all his work. Breshit bet. Pasuk Esrim Bishalosh, Genesis 2.23 Bayomer Ha'adam, Zot Ha'am Etzem Me'atzamai, Uvasar Mivasari, Lazot Yikare Isha, Ki Me'ish Lukacha Zot. Breshit Bet Pasuk Shesh, Genesis 2.6 Ve'ed Ya'ale Min Ha'aretz, Ve'hishka Et Kol Pnei Ha'adama. Some of the meanings uh, that we would think of as being from are trans sometimes translated in English as of. And so we see that here. Adam is talking about Eve. And he says, she is bone of my bones. Etsem uh, me'atzamai. And so we, would, we don't say that phrase. We say bone of my bone. But the same idea is bone from my bone, flesh of my flesh, or flesh, flesh from my flesh. And we see that she is called Isha because Me'ish, from, from out of man, is how she um, was taken. Now there is a full word which also means from that we see in this scripture. The, um, the mist is coming up min ha'aretz, from the earth. And in some of the other uh, lessons that we've done, with the Lamed being, meaning to, or the Bet meaning in, we have looked at how those prepositions are attached to personal pronouns. Li is to me, lo is to him. The personal pronoun, when attaches to the idea of from, from me or from him, actually attaches to this full word, min. So we're not going to look at those for the preposition from. We're just going to note that when it's attached, the mem by itself is attached to a word. It means from or of. It's also used in the sense of uh, the comparative. When we compare two things, we say this is better than that. This is bigger than that. And this is how they form this grammatical concept uh, in Biblical Hebrew by using the mem. Breshit Dalit Pasuk Shalosh Genesis 4, 13 Vayomer Kain al Yehovah 
gadol avoni menso mizmor samech gimel pasuk arba psalm 63 verse 4 kitov chastecha mechayim svatai yeshabchun cha iov lamed gimel pasuk shtemesre job 33 12 hen zot tzadakta e'encha ki yirbe eloha me enosh so in the first verse here we see that uh, God is punishing Cain and Cain says Gadol Avoni Minso and literally translated Gadol is big or great Avoni my sin that mem from and then the idea of carrying. We translate that as my sin is greater than I can bear, greater than I can carry. In the second example uh, from Psalms, we see, Kitov chastecha me chayim, literally, because good chastecha, your chesed, your loving kindness, me from chayim. And we translate that, your loving kindness is better than life. The third example, uh, Job is rebuking one of his friends, and he's saying that God is greater than man. And it's the same grammatical structure. Your be is to be increased. Eloha, this is the singular of Elohim. It's used a few times. Me enosh, from man. God is greater than man. It is very rarely used, uh, but occasionally in the superlative form, the best, the biggest, uh, but usually there's a different construction used. So it's still kind of the idea of from or of, but we translate it in the comparative, bigger than, better than. We're going to move on to the use of the mem as a suffix. And this is probably something you're very familiar with. The masculine plural is formed by adding not just the mem sofit, but the yud and the mem. Breshit kaf, Aleph pasuk shoshim va'arba, Genesis 21:34. Ve'yagar Avraham be'eretz plishtim yamim rabim. Breshit Mem Pasucha Meshesre, Genesis 40, verse 15. Kigunov Gunavti me Eretz Ha'ivrim, Vagampo lo Asiti Uma, Ki Samu Oti Babor. So in the first example, we see uh, Abraham is living in the land of the Plish team, the plural uh, Philistines, Yamim, days. Rabim many. He lived there for a long time. Yamim is a noun. Rabim is uh, an adjective. And as you remember from other lessons, I hope, that the uh, adjective and noun must match. So they're both masculine plural. Yamim Rabim. In the second example we have here, uh, this is Joseph. And we see that me Eretz from the land. And which land is it? It's the land Ha'ivrim. And uh, this is the first place where Ivrim is used as a noun in uh, Tanakh, from the land of the Hebrews. He was stolen from the land of the Hebrews. I want to take a moment right here to talk about a grammatical function which is not unique to Hebrew, but it is used widely. And that's the difference between the plural and the dual. Hebrew has a special ending for things that come in pairs. We think of hands, eyes, ears, um, legs. Well, we're going to see some examples. But I'm going to show you the difference in the uh, spelling so that you can see the difference between these two. So the dual is just for things that are of two. The spelling difference between the plural and the dual is illustrated as you see. Uh, on the right side we see the plural. It just has the chirik under the last letter of the noun and the yud and mem sofit as we've been looking at. 
On the left side on the dual, you have a patach under the last letter of the root word. The chirik comes under the yud and the mem safi. Bereshit kavzayin pasuk esrim b'shtayim. Genesis 27:22. Vayigash Yaakov el Yitzchak aviv v'yimushehu v'yomer hakol kol Yaakov v'hayadayim yede esav v'yikra yed aleph pasuk esrim b'shalosh. Leviticus 11:23. V'chol sheret ha'of asher lo arba raglayim sheket hu lachem. In the first example, Jacob is coming in before Isaac. He's going to take the blessing, and Isaac uh, touches his arms. And as you remember, his mother had made him up to feel hairy, like Esau was a hairy man. And Isaac says, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And so we see that it is yadayim. When we talk about hands, we talk about feet or eyes, we always use the dual. So it's not, we don't say yadim, reglim, it's yadayim, raglayim. And we're going to see something interesting in this piece from Leviticus. Even though there are four legs, the plural for legs remains in the dual. So it's arba raglayim, four legs. Mizmor pevav pasuk Psalm 86, verse 15. Ba'ata Adonai, Erechum Bechanun, Erech Apayim, Barav Chesed Ve'emet. Breshit Aleph, Pasuk HaRishon, Genesis 1-1. Breshit Bara Elohim, Et HaShemayim, Ve'et HaAretz. Here's an interesting phrase that you're going to touch on. The word for nose is af, but when uh, it talks about long-suffering, it literally is translated as long noses. Well, you can understand that your nose might be a dual because it has uh, two nostrils. But this phrase, Erech Apayim, which literally, literally means a long, long noses, it means long suffering. Uh, one of the wonderful traits of our Creator, that He is long suffering with us. You recognize Genesis 1.1. Uh, we see Elohim, which is when it refers to our Elohim, it's always in the plural. It carries a singular verb, which is worth noting. We also see Shamayim, and also the word Mayim itself. These are two interesting words which appear in the dual. Maybe set us to thinking, why would Shamayim, why would the heavens be in a dual? Mayim, why is Mayim in the dual? Um, you might take a hint from that there were two waters before the rain. There was the, the water that was outward surrounding the earth and the atmosphere before the rain fell in Noah's time, and then there's the water that's on the earth. Maybe. Breshit Memhe Pasuk Shesh, Genesis 45, 6. Kizesh Nataim Hara'a Pekerev Ha'arts, Ba'od Chamesh Shanim Asher En Charish Bakatsir Vayikra Yudbet Pasuk Hamesh Leviticus twelve five Vim Nikeva Teled Vitama Shivuayim Kanidata Vishishim Yom Visheshet Yamim Teshev Al Dame Tahara. So the dual ending turns out to be a kind of useful thing. Uh, you hear it often in modern Hebrew. In the first example, this is during Joseph, and he says, look, two years of the um, famine have come and gone, and there's five more years of famine coming. And you can see the difference. Uh, in the two years, it's not shanim, as it is when it talks about the five years, chamesh shanim, but shnatayim. They just stick this ayim ending on anything, and that makes it dual. Shnatayim is specifically two years. In uh, the... Uh, Leviticus piece, uh, you know the plural for Shavua, for week, is Shavuot. It's a plural. But we can stick an ayim ending on it anyway and make Shruayim and it becomes two weeks. 
So this just touches on the beginning of the uses for the Mem. We'll get on to some more next time. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim Ahashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.